Hello, I'm Dan from Ace RV Rentals and Sales, and today we're going to be taking a look at our 2020 Dutchman Kodiak Ultralight 227BH. I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about the inside and the outside of this trailer so you'll be all set and prepared when you decide to rent from us. We're going to start in the front of the trailer here. We have two 20 pound propane tanks. Um, we'll put sensors on them so you'll see how full or empty they are. But if you do need to refill them, truck stations and campsites will do it for you. They'll each last about a week before you'll have to refill them, um, but they're going to power things like your stove, your water heater, and your fridge when you're not plugged in. Behind that here we have our house battery. The house battery is going to be for very minor electrical things like the lights or the awning. It just means you don't have to be plugged in just to turn on a light, for example. It's going to be charged when you're plugged into your vehicle and the engine is running or you're plugged into shore power. While this trailer is 26 feet and 11 inches long, the height we like to say is about 12 and a half feet tall, so just be wary of places like parking garages and drive throughs although most tunnels should be fine. We're going to come over to the left side here. I'm going to open up this big storage area that spreads across the front of the trailer here. We're going to put a few of the hoses and cords you'll need. We have our 30 amp power cord right here. So once you're plugged into 30 amp shore power, all the major electrical appliances will work. That'll be your TVs, your microwave, your AC unit, and your outlets. Um, over here in this box, we have this white hose, which is going to be your fresh in city water hose. We also have the spiral hose, which is going to be your outside shower hose. And in this box over here, we have an extension cord. Um, you have a small black wire, which is going to be for your TV cable. And we have another crank for the jacks. We also have our sewer hose here, and I can show you how to dump out the tanks. So in the back of the left side here, we have our dumping station, where the black and gray tanks converge here. So all you want to do is just take your sewer hose, clip it on, just like this, and then you're going to take the other end with the elbow and stick this in the ground. After you do that, you'll notice you have two valves here. Um, the one on the left is going to be for the gray tank. Your gray valve is going to be for your sinks and your shower. And the one on the right is for the black tank. Your black valve here is going to be for your toilet. When it's pulled out like this, that means it's open. So if there were anything in the tanks right now, they'd be coming out due to gravity. We just recommend you open up the black one first and then the gray one to kind of flush it out. But there'll be sensors inside that will show you how full or empty these tanks are. So once they're empty, you're just gonna push it back in to close it, unscrew the hose, and you're all set. Over here on the left side, we also have a few inlets. Um, we're gonna start with the TV cable inlet. If you remember that small black wire I showed you, you're just gonna hook it up in here, and you can get all the channels through cable at your campsite. If you don't have cable hookup, there's also an antenna in this trailer, so you can just find all the local channels that way. Next that here, we have our fresh in city water inlets. You're going to use that white garden hose I showed you. The fresh water inlet is going to be to fill up the tank itself. So when you're dry camping, you want to use the sink or the shower. You're going to take it off of the tank and this will be how you'll fill it up. That's opposed to the city water right here. You're going to use the same hose for this, but this is going to be for when you're at a campsite and you want to take direct connection of water from the campsite into your pipes. This will bypass the tank and you won't be using anything off of your tank. Next up here we have our power cord connector. So you're just gonna plug in your 30 amp connection here. Next that we have the back of the fridge. This will just start leaking water. It's just condensation so it's not broken or anything. And next that we have our furnace exhaust. So expect it to be hot of course and don't put your hand here. And finally on this side we have our tank flush valve. You won't have to worry about this. This is just for us when you get back. Coming around to the back of the trailer here, we can see we have our spare tire right here. Next to that, we have our hot water heater. I'll talk more about the hot water inside, but like the first exhaust, expect this to be hot. Next to that, we have our outlet for the outside shower. So if you remember that blue spiral hose, you're gonna hook it up in here and wash yourself down. Now on to the right side of this trailer, we have our outside kitchen. So in here, we have a little stove here. Next to that we have our fridge. This is going to run on the house battery and the propane when you're not plugged in. But once you do plug into shore power, it will automatically switch over to electricity, just like the fridge inside. In the back of the grill, we have our connection to the propane. We actually have an external propane outlet right here. Um, so if you had an external grill at your campsite, you can also hook up here and I'll take it off the propane in the front. But otherwise, you're just gonna hook this up over here. 
Also over here we have the switch for the back two jacks. It's gonna be automatic. All you're gonna do is just hold down extend and they will come down. This is going to run on the house battery, so you don't need to be plugged in for this. Next to the kitchen here we have two 15 amp 110 volt wall outlets. Just make sure you're plugged in for these to work. And below that here we have another TV cable inlet in case the one on the other side does not reach. And finally on the right side here, we have the other end of that big storage area where we've placed uh, the chains, the sway bars, hitch ball, and some extra blocks for the tires and the jacks. We also have the switch for the front two jacks, just like the ones in the back. And across from that, we have some switches for the LED lights outside. They'll be for the front and the speakers. So that wraps up the outside of this trailer, so we're gonna head inside here. You just wanna lift this up. Let me open this up now. Just make sure the door is fully out and then you can bring the steps down. Just pull on this blue handle and you can bring these down. You'll also notice we have a screen door that detaches from the cabin door here. When you enter the RV, you'll just see down here, for safety purposes, we have our fire extinguisher over here. Right above my head, we have our smoke detector, and beneath the dinette, we have our carbon monoxide and propane detector. Also over here, you'll see the specifications for this vehicle, so the dimensions of the trailer, as well as the sizes of the tanks. Also, by my head at the entrance, we have the most important part, which is going to be the control panel, which will tell you everything you need to know about the trailer. So we're going to start off with the tank levels over here. So if I push down each of these levels, um, these lights will turn on from empty, one-thirds, two-thirds to full. So as I hold down fresh, which is for the fresh water tank, you can see that that is two-thirds. You can see the battery is low. We have our black tank, which is empty, and our other gray tank, which is also empty. These two have no meaning on this. We have the porch light here, which is going to be for the LED lights outside on the awning. We have the seating lights, which are the galley lights right above my head. We have the water pump, so once I switch this on, we can get water from any of the faucets. We just recommend you have this off when you're driving, however, just in case you hit a bump, for example, you don't want your tap opening and all your water leaking out. You can also heat up your water with either propane gas or electricity if you're plugged in. So if I switch this on, it'll just take up to 20 minutes to heat up your water, so if you want to take a hot shower, just plan that much in advance. Also over here we have our awning switch that is going to run on the house battery just like the lights and the outside jacks. So I'm just going to hold down out and out comes the awning. It'll go out about 8 feet total and if it gets windy or rainy you should pull it back in since it's only for shade. Starting off in the back here to my right we have our bunk beds and we have a privacy cream to go along with that. And to my left here we have our bathroom. I'm just going to start off with the toilet here. It just works like an airplane toilet, so you just want to push down on this pedal here. Just make sure the water pump is on for anything to work in here. The toilet paper is RV specific, so you'll have to go like the camping section at your supermarket, or campsites will also sell them. Over here we just have a standard sink and a standard shower. We'll also give you little balls of solution for the toilet, just in case the smell comes up, you can just pour that down there to freshen it. Next up is the kitchen, so I'm going to start off with the fridge here. We have a pretty big, almost residential sized fridge. Um, as I said, outside it's going to run on the propane when you're not plugged in. But once you do plug into 30 amp electricity, it will automatically switch over. So your food will stay cold the whole time. Next up over here we have our stove, which is going to run on the propane. So all you want to do is just set each of these burners to the fire option to light it. You can hear the propane come out, then you just want to hit the burner and spark it. Uh, once you're done, just wait a few minutes before you put the top back on, otherwise the propane might get trapped in there and the glass might shatter. To work the oven, all you want to do is just set the pilot for this one over to the fire option. Just wait about 20 or so seconds for the propane to get in there. They're just going to take a long lighter and just spark it in the back here. Above the stove here we have our standard house microwave. This will only work on 30 amp electricity. And below that here we have our fuse box. We'll give you some extra fuses for this just in case anything blows. Over here in the living area we have our TV. Um, just make sure you're plugged in for this to work. Uh, we have a little button right here. It's pushed out right now, but if you push it in, this green light will turn on. That just works the antenna. So if you want to use the antenna, just push that in to work it. 
but if you're going to use cable instead, you can push it out. Next to that here, we have a radio. You can connect your phone with Bluetooth here. On the ceiling here, we have the controls for the AC. First of all, this dial here is just going to change the temperature, so this is going to be the warmest setting, and this is going to be the coolest setting. Over here, you can turn the dial. The gray one here is going to be for just the fan, whereas this one is going to use the compressor. So if I wanted to turn on the AC, I would just turn it 180 degrees counterclockwise. We also have our kitchen sink here. The cover also doubles as a cutting board. And in this drawer here, we have an envelope where we've placed those extra fuses I was talking about, along with our registration and the instruction manual. In the front here, we have our bed. It's surrounded by cabinet space. You can even hang your clothes in here. There's a little pole in here. To use most of the windows, all you want to do is just pull this handle out and pull the window open. And the same goes for the screen door here. As for the blinds, you just pull them down and push them back up. And here we have our dinette, which also turns into a bed, and I'll show you that right now. I just took the top cushions out here and lifted the bottom cushions up like this. From there, you can just take the tabletop off just by wiggling off the pillows. Then you can take the tabletop and just rest it on these edges here. And finally, you can take all four of those cushions and lay them across in this formation like this. And here's your bed. And that is going to do it for our 2020 Dutchman Kodiak Ultralight 227BH. I've been Dan from Ace of Rentals and Sales, and have a great trip.